Hey guys, welcome back to the Invader PC Studio. So today we do have a few juicy topics to talk about as well as some cool piece of hardware from Team Red. Now, if we take a look at the CPU market, we both know that when it comes to Team Red, AMD and Team Blue Intel, they have been trading blows quite furiously, especially in the past two to three years. Now, today in the year 2022, when it comes to the highest performance metric CPU, Intel has laid its claims with its 12th gen monsters. Wow, is our skit in the beginning truly the fate of AMD? Well, AMD definitely does not think so. Because if we take a look at this year's CES, which was in January, AMD actually announced their answer to Intel's claims with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which hopefully we'll be taking a look at soon. Hopefully. But apart from that, from weeks prior to today, AMD also announced a series of processors on what is in store rather for everyone in the month of April, which actually has already started, if you didn't know. So in this announcement, they actually announced a series of Zen 2 and Zen 3 processors. In the Zen 3 portion of this, we'll be taking a look at things like the 5700X, the 5600, and the 5500. But today, we'll be taking a look at the Ryzen 7 5700X, which is the price affordable alternative to its older and more power-hungry brother, the 5800X. But before we get into the nitty gritty between these two CPUs, have you guys noticed that something is a bit different in here? You know, just let me over, over there, like over there. Well, that's because MSI has decided to partner together with us, which is why they have a feature wall. Just like ASUS, right here, right here. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled, especially this month when we have promotional bundles for both ASUS and MSI components, just like this one right here which I will take out, like now. Oh. Okay, well, this is a big boy. Okay, so this build right here, right, actually houses the Ryzen 5 5600X together with the 6500XT. So you may be thinking that those components may not exactly match that well, but for something of an entry-level system, this is actually pretty potent. Now you may be thinking, what kind of pricing are we talking about? This actually right here comes at 1189, which is a steal. But make sure to check out all our promotional bundles on our website, invaderpc.com. Now, I think that's enough about our website and let's get on to the video. So today we'll be taking a closer look at the Ryzen 7 5700X, especially against the 5800X when it comes to its benchmarks. So we'll be taking them through a skew of benchmarks, both synthetic and gaming, to actually see how they fare when it comes to price to performance. Now, fun fact is that the Ryzen 7 5700X actually shares many characteristics as its OEM predecessor, the Ryzen 7 5800 non-X. Because if you look at components and specs, they actually share the same amount of cores, which is 8, and threads, which is 16, and also sharing the same amount of TDP, which is 65 watts. Now, to make up for this substantial drop of TDP of 40 watts, the Ryzen 7 5700X base clock is actually significantly lower at 3.4 GHz compared to its older brother, the 5800X at 3.8 GHz, which, if you didn't know, is a 400 MHz drop. However, if we take a look at their boost clock, they are relatively closer at 4.6 GHz, which is only 100 MHz away from the 5800X. But how does this actually compare in the real world? Well, to test this, we ran both CPUs using the following system. And for benchmarks, we ran both of them through synthetic workloads and through game benchmarks to actually have a rough idea on how they will actually affect performance. For synthetic workloads, we ran both CPUs in Cinebench R20 and R23, both single-core and multi-core. Whilst when it comes to gaming performance, 
We ran them both through 3D mount for an overall game performance idea and Shadow of the Tomb Raider for CPU performance and lastly Red Dead Redemption 2 for gaming performance. And we're back from our benchmarks. So before we take a look inside and see the scores, why don't we talk about the system used for this testing. So for the test that we ran, we used this system right here. So make sure to pause the screen if you want to see the full spec list of the system. So everything is the same apart from the CPUs. So for our first test, we ran Cinebench R20. So if we take a look at both scores of the 5700X versus the 5800X, we can see that the 5700X is within range of 10% at 5280 points, compared to the 5800X 5992. So do keep in mind that all tests are ran three times and they are averaged out. But for the most part, we can see that the 5700X and the 5800X are very consistent, especially when it comes to performance for the CPU cores. Now moving on to our next test of Cinebench R23. Starting out with single core performance, we can see here that the 5700X is actually fairly close to the 5800X. And this could be actually due to the codecs used in Cinebench R20 versus R23. So over here, we can see that the average scores of the 5700X are closer to 1534 versus its older brother, the 5800X at 1593. So in over here, we can see that the performance difference is closer to that of maybe 1-2% to compared to the previous test. Now moving on to multi-core performance, we can see that here the scores do dip a bit but they are still within the 5-10% to range. So for the 5700X, we are looking at 13498 versus the 5800X's 15394. So looking at this, we can see that the 5700X is actually fairly close to its older brother. So of course, depending on price, this could play quite a big part. But how does this actually work out in the real world? So if we take a look at gaming benchmarks starting at 3D Mark Time Spy, we can see that the 5700X again is fairly close to its older brother. So when we ran Time Spy, we can see that the average score we are looking at is about 9,855 compared to the 5800X which is at 9,948. So over here we can see that in terms of game performance, you're not probably going to look at too much but we will take a closer look at that shortly. Moving on to CPU score, we can see that the 5700X takes is about 10,735 whilst the 5800X is looking at 11,506. So when we look at Time Spy itself, we can see that the difference is between similar 2 to 3%. And moving on to our game testing. At Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see that the 5700X has an average performance of about 143 FPS versus the 5800X which is actually surprising at 142. So in terms of performance, we can see that they are nearly identical. In, in fact, we are looking at about a 1-2% to error margin. And moving from there, we can see that from Red Dead Redemption 2, we can see the breakdown of the performance is actually quite similar. In terms of average FPS, both the 5700X and 5800X average about 74 FPS. But when it came to the minimum and maximum FPS, we can see that here the 5800X does stretch its legs slightly higher at 118 FPS versus the 5700X 105 FPS. But when you take a look at the minimum FPS, they both average around 42. So what does this actually tell us about this CPU? Well, it's quite simple frankly. The 5700X is very similar to that of the 5800X, right? So of course, the main question boils down to price. So when we are taking a look at the US market right now, this CPU right here is supposed to be around 299 USD, right? But when we take a look at its older brother, the 5800X, we are seeing it average around 360 to about 400. So depending on price, the 5700X can be a very good CPU to actually beat you over. Now, when we compare this to Intel, this is a bit slightly harder to say 
because it does depend on your regional equivalent but versus his older brother the V600X seems like it's more of um, a value buy compared to that of the 5800X ultimately this leaves you the consumer to have more choice should you want a more power efficient workload the 5700X is a good choice for you or if you prefer full performance and thermals isn't too much of concern Intel will be there for you as well. So I hope this video was informative to you and gives you a better idea on the CPU market space as of right now. Let us know in the comments down below what you guys actually thought about the video and what you guys think about our setup. Is things getting better or not? Let us know. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content just like this or if you like this make sure to subscribe and leave a like especially if you enjoyed the video. Now before we go, make sure to check out our website invaderpc.com which will be in the description down below to see all our new bundles for April especially keep your eyes peeled for the systems that we'll run with this bad boy right here. Now I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.